Hello friends, I'm Abby and today I will be ranking my reads for the month of August. Last month I chose to rank the books that I read from my least favorite to my most favorite and it ended up being really fun to go through and see what my favorite books of the month were and it starts to get really hard when I'm trying to figure out which ones do I like better than others. I don't know that I'm going to do this every month but it has been fun the last two months and I'm enjoying it so I thought you know what this month I'm gonna do it again. In the month of August I read 24 books. Um, my number of books read has been staying high. So I read 24, I DNF'd one. In terms of statistics I read five three-star books, ten four-star books, and nine five-star books. So I had a lot of really great reads this month and not very many that I didn't like. I really would recommend any of the books that I read this month. I just had some that made more of an impact on me than others. So to do my ranking, I use a system called Caw Pile, which gives a number score from one to 10, but Goodreads ranks using five stars. So it converts it to a star rating for me, but sometimes things are like a high four star or a high three star, and so I might mark it as a four star. The Caw Pile system is really how I rank my books, not necessarily based on like star rating. And books that get five stars are usually books that make a long term lasting impact on me, whereas four stars are really, really good books and I truly love them. And then Three star books are books that I think are good books and I would still recommend. They just weren't really great. Like they didn't have that extra something that made it a great book for me. So let's start with the book I DNF'd and that is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. I did not DNF this one because it wasn't a good book. I didn't DNF it because I was bored. It's a great book. The audiobook was fantastic. It's narrated by Michael C. Hall who is the voice of Dexter in the TV show Dexter. So I was really really enjoying it. I was reading it for the summer ween readathon and I just wasn't ready for how sad it is. It was much sadder than I expected and than I was ready for. So I decided to DNF it for my own mental well-being. It is the story of a family that moves to Maine because the dad in the family is starting to work as a doctor at this college and there is a pet cemetery behind their house in the woods. When the family's cat dies, the father decides to bury the cat in the pet cemetery and the cat comes back to life. That's kind of all I knew about the story. It gets sad. <laughs> so I had to stop reading it because it made me sad. It made me feel emotionally drained and I just wasn't prepared for it mental health wise. I needed something positive, so. <laughs> I didn't finish it. I'm over halfway through, but if you are really into horror and you don't mind sad books, like books that make you feel kind of sick, by all means, please pick this up. I might pick it up later because I really loved it. I loved the writing. It just wasn't for me at the time. Next, I don't rank my nonfiction books. I leave those separate. And so this month, my nonfiction book I read was Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. This is a book about how black women have been left out of the feminist movement and how feminism is usually focused on white women's rights and forgets about women of color in our society. I thought that this was very impactful it gave me a lot of things to think about. It focuses on the idea that a one-size-fits-all feminist movement is not what is needed and it essentially erases and alienates and minimizes the needs of women who are not white and are not privileged in society. I also really like the structure of this book because it's split up into different sections, different topics. So like one topic will be about education and how feminism for black women is different in education than it is for white women in education. And it's separated into different ideas and different topics. So that made it really helpful for me to categorize the statistics I was receiving and the information I was gaining from this book. I could just take it all in based on the topic and think about how I could apply that to my life in each different area. Highly recommend it to everybody. It was a fantastic read, very educational, and if you consider yourself a feminist, you have to read this book. So let's get into actually ranking my reads. 23rd place is the most disappointing read for me, which is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. 
This book I had really hyped up in my brain. I love Riley Sager's writing in the other book that I read by him, Home Before Dark. So I expected to love The Last Time I Lied. And the writing actually was really good in terms of flow of chapters and chapter length. It all was great. It was just boring and I found myself hating the main character. I hated basically every character in this. So The Last Time I Lied is a book that takes place at a summer camp and it's centered around the game Two Truths and a Lie. It focuses on the main character Emma who when she was at the camp as a teenager, three girls went missing, her three bunkmates all went missing, were never found, and she was kind of the one left and was haunted by their memory and what happened to them and she's asked to come back for the first time that the camp is reopening to be a camp counselor and she ends up staying in a cabin with three young girls things are starting to happen there again and she's trying to solve the mystery of what happened to these girls so it sounded really cool like a really awesome summary thriller i expected it to be fast paced and creepy and take place in the woods and it was more about rich people problems and just really mean girls. <laughs> like I hated every character in this book. I didn't like Emma. I didn't like any of the guys. I didn't like any of the girls that went missing. So I didn't really care that they went missing. I didn't care about the three girls in present day either. It just, I didn't really connect to any of the characters. I didn't like it. I didn't think the plot twists were like twisty enough. It was just kind of boring. And I, that makes me really sad because this was one of my most exciting reads that I like wanted to get to in the month of August. So I'm kind of sad. I'm not writing off Riley Sager because I loved Home Before Dark. I think that this book just didn't necessarily do for me what I wanted it to do. It just wasn't right for me. In 22nd place is Watchmen by Alex Moore. This is a comic book that has been turned into an HBO TV show and has been turned into movies and it's essentially a story of this group of people who they don't have powers or anything. They just gathered together to be vigilante justice people and I read it for my real life book club. I went into it thinking I was going to hate it, and I didn't hate it. I actually really enjoyed it, especially after talking about it with my book club. It's a collection of comic books, so each like section was essentially a whole comic book in itself. And I like that all the characters are human. They are not superheroes. They are human beings with human flaws, and it takes some kind of crazy twists at the end. It just was so much more realistic than other superhero stories that I have read or watched movies for. And I really liked that. It was refreshing to read about people who have real flaws and real emotions. It wasn't my favorite thing, obviously, since it's in 22nd place, but I didn't dislike it as much as I thought it was going to. So <laughs> there's a plus side to that. If you like comic books and if you like stories about like vigilante justice and a little bit of romance, a little bit of sci-fi was thrown in there as well. I think that you would really enjoy this. I am excited to watch the HBO series because I hear that it's fantastic. So I'm still really interested in the story. It just wasn't something that I truly loved. 21st place is another disappointing read for me, which was The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. Emily St. John Mandel wrote Station Eleven, which I truly love. So I was really eager to get into The Glass Hotel. The Glass Hotel is a story about this girl named Vincent, her brother Paul, really this huge collection of characters, kind of like Station Eleven. There's not like a main character, but I'd say Vincent is like our the one who kind of ties everything together. And it's a story of Ponzi schemes and romance shipwrecks. <laughs> It's really just, it's hard to explain what this book is about. The things that I loved about this book, Emily St. John Mandel is a master of switching characters and switching perspectives. Every chapter would go to like a different character. Some chapters were told like the chatter of the office and they were told from like a third person omniscient point of view that was focused on all of the people who worked in this office. It's kind of this whole story about escaping from realism and 
your real life and what people will do to try to make their lives better even if it's not real. There are chapters where a character is like spiraling mentally and the writing is like a run-on sentence, like a full run-on chapter, like no punctuation. That was really cool. The writing style is so amazing in this book and the theming I really enjoyed. I just didn't love the topic. I didn't connect a whole lot with it, like with the idea of a Ponzi scheme. Like it didn't really interest me very much. So I just didn't connect really with the story. But overall the writing was fantastic. If you like mixed media style writing, not actually mixed media, but like not every chapter is written the same, I would highly recommend this. 20th place is Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. This is a mystery novel that I read for Summerween. Catherine House is a story about this house called the Catherine House that is a kind of secret elite college. The main character Inez, you know at the beginning of the story that she's really troubled. She's had a lot of like messed up stuff happen and she's not sure how she even got into the school but she decides to go and she is learning all about what Catherine House is and there's all kinds of like weird experiment type things going on that she's not sure about and you as the reader are discovering along with her. I thought that the narration of this book and that the main character of this book, Inez, was all just a little apathetic. Because the main character was so apathetic, it felt like nothing happened in the book and like stakes were never very high. Everything was just kind of blah. Even the big twists were kind of like, hmm. But I loved so many pieces of this book, like the Dark Academia piece. I loved the theming of escaping from reality and is it worth it to become apathetic and to not care about anything in order to never feel pain again? Or is it better to live a more full life and have a full range of emotions and feel a lot of pain in some moments? And I liked the setting, like the college setting where they're going to class and they're having fun and making friends and living their lives in college was great. It just was something that didn't do what I expected it to do. I thought it would be more of a thriller and it was more like a slow burn mystery. 19th place, The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. This is a retelling of Twelfth Night that focuses on a girl named Violet, whose great, 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 great grandmother survived the shipwreck pulled herself onto this t onto this island in Maine called Lyric and essentially started the town there. She met a man and fell in love and st had kids. And now many years later, Violet is like, hey, I'm gonna go find the shipwreck. And her brother Sam has attempted suicide and she's really struggling, feeling like she doesn't fit in anywhere and she doesn't know who she is. She's experimenting with her sexuality. She's very open about it. So when her family sends her to Lyric, she decides to look for the shipwreck and she meets a girl there. She meets a guy there. She is falling in love and finding herself. Really a st cute little young adult story about learning who you are, finding yourself and not defining yourself based on your family history. You can be your own person. This book was really sweet and had a lot of steamy moments for a young adult book that I really appreciated. The slow burn romance was great and it was one of those books with a love triangle where I was seriously rooting for both characters. So it made it very stressful for me while reading to figure out what I wanted to happen. I didn't even know. I didn't know what I wanted to happen. The things that I didn't love about it so much are just that, similar to what I've talked about previously, it just didn't feel like a lot happened. I don't dislike anything in this book by any means. It just wasn't anything super special for me. It didn't stand out. I don't even really remember much about it. Um, I loved the relationship between Violet and Sam, her brother, and I did love the discussions about mental health and the importance of getting therapy and getting help. If you aren't feeling like something isn't right, it's okay to go to therapy even if you don't have a mental disorder. You can still go and talk to somebody about it. They went to therapy as a family, which I thought was great. I loved to see that featured in a young adult book and that see that being normalized. So if you're into books like that, I think that you would enjoy it. Um, like I said, not my favorite of all time, but very cute, had a cute romance, features, um, 
bisexual representation. I can't speak on whether it was helpful or harmful representation, but it was there. And mental health, which I can speak on, that it was a good representation of mental health. Panic attacks, things like that that are not often talked about, I thought it was a good representation for. In 18th place is The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. I listened to this on audiobook, and I would highly recommend, if you're going to read this book, listen to it on audiobook. It's fantastic. It was enthralling. There are different like sound effects and like music and all kinds of stuff going on in it that really enhanced my reading experience. This is essentially a love story to New York. It is a science fiction story, a science fiction fantasy where these people are waking up as embodiments of different sections of New York. So it starts with this man stumbling off a train and all of a sudden realizing that he is Manhattan. We have Brooklyn, we have Queens, we have the Bronx, Staten Island is included in there. It really is just a very cool, unique story where people are representing these cities and they're fighting this um, main villain who is this lady in white who comes in and is trying to destroy New York and they have to come together and fight her and stop her from destroying their city. As I said, what I loved about this book, it's unique, it's fast paced, and the audiobook was fantastic. I truly love the characters. They are the shining peak of this book. And I think that if you love New York or if you have a connection to New York, you should absolutely read it. I don't have a whole lot of a connection to New York. So a lot of the like really special references I probably missed. Um, the characters all represent the collective of that city and the diversity of the city. And so it just didn't connect with me a whole lot because I don't have that connection to New York. But I think that if you do, you would absolutely love this book. I did love the science fiction aspects of it and you know like a found family story where they all have to come together and get to know each other quickly in order to save their city that they love. There's also some different sexuality and diversity representation in there so it is great to see that representation included in books. I think that you should absolutely check this out. It is unique. It's like nothing else that I've read before. And as I mentioned, get the audiobook. It will be worth it if you're planning on reading this book. 17th place is the book Find Layla by Meg Ellison. And I chose this as my Amazon first reads book for the month. This is a book about a girl named Layla who is living in filth with her mother and brother. Essentially her mom is very neglectful and is not taking care of them and so Layla at 13 years old is being the head of the household. She's the one getting the food and sorting out the money, doing all the housework and their house just is filthy and has mold in it and water on the floor. It's just not a suitable environment for children. And so this book focuses on Layla. When she goes to school, there's a science project where they have to take this video camera and record a biome and an unusual one. So one that other people may not have seen or may not think about. And so she decides to do her project on her home. When the video is posted, Children's Services gets involved and it becomes this situation where all of a sudden her life is turned upside down. She has to make some really tough decisions. I thought this book was very quick. I read it in one day, I think, maybe one and a half days. It went really quickly. It was very heartbreaking and moving to read about this girl who realizes that things are different for her and is experiencing extreme consequences of being considered other or different and is just kind of buying time for herself. And that was really hard to read, but it was impactful. And I think that if you are interested in learning more about homelessness and the way the Children's Protective Services system work, the benefits and the downfalls to that, I really would encourage you to pick this up. Layla is so lovable and you just wanna hug her and help her. It doesn't feature a romance. It doesn't feature anything like that. It's all about Layla and her story. And it's a short book. In 16th place is The Little Prince, and this is a very famous children's book about a little prince who falls off of a planet and comes to Earth, and this pilot crashes his plane in the desert, runs into the little prince, and they have this adventure together where they 
talk about all this metaphorical stuff. The themes of this book are incredible. It is all about how as we get older, we lose the magic that comes with childhood and that adventurous spirit that we have as kids. What we can do to kind of get that back and how we can pursue a life of adventure even when we are adults. It was a really sweet read. I think that if you like very symbolic stories, this would be great. It's a children's story written for adults. It's, a, it's telling adults what we're missing and the, what we need to do to get back to that childhood state. It's so cute and pure. I think that this book meant more to me after finishing it than it did while I was reading it. While I was reading it, I was more confused. And then once the book was over, it all came together for me. But it was so sweet and pure, and I definitely will be thinking about this for a while and about the meanings behind it. In 15th place is The Sundown Motel. This is a thriller about two women in two different timelines. One is this night clerk at the Sundown Motel who starts experiencing some spooky stuff going on in the motel, and she disappears. And then the second timeline is that woman's niece who is coming back to this motel and starts working at this motel so that she can put herself in her aunt's shoes and kind of solve the mystery herself of what happened to her aunt because nobody else is doing it. This book is perfect for murderinos. It's dedicated to murderinos at the beginning of the book. And it's all about women who are overcoming this need to be polite and sweet and letting people tell them what to do and put them in uncomfortable situations just because they don't want to break the like social code. It's also about women who are doing the detective work that other people aren't doing. Especially in our day and age, there are so many online sleuths and citizen detectives that are doing this work and solving crimes themselves. It makes me think of Michelle McNamara who wrote I'll Be Gone in the Dark because she looked into the Golden State Killer, she wrote this book, she did all this investigating herself as just a journalist, and that book led to them catching the Golden State Killer. So it reminded me so much of that, but in a fictional story with ghosts. The ending was not as satisfying as I hoped it would be. It was building up and I wanted it to have more ghosts, more thrilling stuff, and the ending just wasn't something it cared a whole lot about. At 80% mark, I was ready to give this a five stars. It was fantastic. I loved the twist. And then the ending just kind of like fell flat for me. So if you love crime cases and women who are solving crimes and just screwing politeness because politeness should not be the thing that gets you kidnapped or murdered, this book is for you. In 14th place is Homegoing by Ya Jesse. This is a multi-generational story about two sisters, Effia and Essie, who both are born in Africa and then one goes into slavery and the other one is married by a slave owner. And then it follows their generations all the way up to modern day America. So we follow it through slavery in Africa, slavery in America. So it really just highlights that we're still in the same position today as we were so many years ago. Like there are more rights, but that doesn't mean that the discrimination has gone away. And I think that this book really helped make that clear. It follows so many characters that I found myself not connecting fully to every character. I wish that I did, but that's the only reason it's so low on the list is that I didn't connect to every character as much as I expected to or as much as I wanted to. But the story itself is so moving and impactful. It gave me so much to think about. And I listened to this on audiobook, which I think skewed my opinion of it a little bit. So I bought it in a physical copy so that I can go back and read it because I think if I'm visually looking at it and I can highlight and underline everything that's meaningful to me, it will mean much more and would probably have been higher if I read it that way the first time. 13th place is Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. This is the first Twilight book retold from Edward's perspective. I did a whole reading vlog about this, so I'm not gonna tell you my in-depth thoughts, but I enjoyed it. It was too long. If I wasn't into the Twilight fandom, I don't think that I would enjoy this. So if you're not into it, I don't think you would. It was interesting. It brought new perspectives to the Twilight book. So I recommend it. If you are into Twilight, you should read it. In 12th place is Freshwater by Akweke Mezi. And do not take the 12th place position in a negative way because I loved this book. I can't think of anything negative to say about it really. 
it was a story about this girl named Ada who they say was born with a foot on the other side. She has these spirits inside of her or like these other personalities inside of her. And when a traumatic event happens to her, it splits. Her brain splits and suddenly becomes Ada and then the other character in her mind. And that event that caused her mind to split like that was so powerful and hurtful to read about and I can still feel it deeply in my bones. I connected so deeply to the emotions discussed and I love the topic of an immigrant woman trying to fit into America and not finding her way necessarily being used by people who are taking advantage of her for not being from America. It just was really interesting and and meaningful. It focuses on the themes of trauma and mental health. I think Freshwater is going to stick with me for a really long time. I think about it often and I'll probably reread it in a few years just to revisit these themes and these ideas. In 11th place is The Last Mrs. Parrish by Liv Constantine. This is a thriller about a girl named Amber who comes from a lower class family and she dreams of marrying this man Jackson Parrish and taking over the life of his wife Daphne. She wants to be rich. She wants all that stuff. She's very manipulative from page one. You know that she is coming for Daphne and she is trying to get her out so that she can be with Jackson and become Mrs. Parrish. It was just a very interesting and very twisty thriller. Halfway through it switches perspectives and I didn't expect that. I was not ready for it. The whole first half of the book you're reading it thinking one thing and then it twists so suddenly you're like, oh shoot, okay, wow, that's not what I expected. I think that it is a really great domestic psychological thriller. So if you love rich people problems and domestic thrillers, psychological mind games, this would be great for you. It lacked something, but I couldn't tell you what it is because I really enjoyed it. I flew through it. I don't know what it's missing for me. Maybe the ending wasn't super satisfying. I don't really know but it was great and I would still highly recommend it. In 10th place is The Guest List by Lucy Foley. This is a story where you are following this group of people who are at a wedding on an Irish island and stuff starts going wrong. Everyone has a secret, everyone has something crazy happening. It's multi-timeline so you're finding out throughout the book what's happening on the wedding night because something terrible happens but you don't know what it is and then you're going back to the day before the wedding and you're seeing the guests arrive, you're seeing all the different people who are involved in the wedding. So you don't even find out what happened on the wedding night until like three fourths of the way through the book and then you're trying to figure out what caused that to happen and who caused that to happen. I'm not going to tell you much more because this book would be really easy to spoil. I think this book was really overhyped for me and that's the reason why it's not higher on the list. I loved the fast pace. I loved the multi perspectives. I loved all of the characters. And by that I mean I hated all of the characters. All of them were awful, but I loved all of them. I wanted everyone to succeed in their goals, which some goals were directly opposed to other people's goals. So I think it also just wrapped up very conveniently, like everything tied together. And oh, what a coincidence that this happened and this happened and these people are all connected in this way it just seemed a little too like mm-hmm I bet that that happened like I'm sure that was a coincidence like a little too good to be true it tied up a little too good to be true so it's not my favorite thriller of all time but it was fast-paced it was not like any other thriller I've read before because you didn't even know what the thing was that happened like you don't know what the main thing is I definitely gasped many a time and if it wasn't so neatly tied up, like everybody brought it all together, I think that I would have ranked it higher. Ninth place is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. This is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling about Miriam, Irina, and Wanda. And they all live in this kingdom where there is an ice lord, an ice king who freezes over everything and has frozen over their spring and Miriam is the money lender's daughter. She takes over the money lending duties and loudly brags that she can turn silver to gold and that starts a whole quest adventure type thing that involves all three women. It's a story about strong women not taking crap 
from men and standing up for themselves. There are elemental magic things included in this. All kinds of stuff like it's like reading a Disney movie in a book. There's some cute romances. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this book, but then the last 20 pages maybe bumped it higher on the list for me. I loved it. Like I said, it gives you all the warm and fuzzies like you're reading a Disney movie. <laughs> I just really loved it. And of course, it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. Ah! If you like fairy tales, women narrators, magic systems, battles, slow, cold, like atmospheric stories, this is for you. Please check it out. It is a little confusing when it switches perspectives because you, it might take you a while to figure out who's talking. That's my only critique. That, and it can be a little bit slow in the middle. I wasn't sure. I don't know if slow is the right word. It was like things kept happening and I would be like, I feel like I'm at the end of the book. Like, am I not at the end of the book? <laughs> and so then we would keep going and another thing would happen, but it all tied together really well. And I just really enjoyed it. Eighth and seventh place are kind of together because I read it all at once, but they're technically two different books. And that is Heartstopper Volume 2 and Heartstopper Volume 3. Heartstopper Volume 2 is the story of Charlie and Nick, which I've talked about in Heartstopper 1, and their story about coming out to their friends, how to do that. And then Heartstopper 3 is this adventure in Paris. Since these are sequels, I'm not going to tell you much about them, but I will tell you that it gives you all the warm and fuzzies. It was exactly what I wanted. I see this described as like a Hufflepuff romance all the time, which is funny because in the book they talk about how one of them is a Gryffindor and one is a Slytherin. So the fact that their love is a Hufflepuff romance is interesting, but it does feel that way. It feels cozy and soft, so full of love. I love that they communicate openly. It's just such a good thing to see in a book because you don't see that all the time. These are just really warm and fuzzy sweet graphic novels about Nick and Charlie and their romance and I recommend it to everyone. You can read this for free online. I will link it down below. It's worth your time, I promise. Sixth place is Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. This is a very popular thriller book about this woman who has agoraphobia and you don't know why. And agoraphobia is a fear of going outside. So she is afraid to leave her house. She can't leave her house. This causes a lot of problems when she witnesses what she thinks is a crime happened across the street. On top of her agoraphobia though, she is taking a lot of medicine and she's drinking heavily with her medicine, which makes her kind of an unreliable narrator. You as the reader are not even sure what's going on. It's kind of crazy. And that's why it's so high on my list is that uh, the whole time I just kept thinking, what is happening? Is this true? Is anything true? And the twists, you're not sure if they're actual twists or if they're dreams she's having because she has some hallucinations. It's just really crazy. It was so fast paced, so interesting. The twists I didn't see coming. I think that if you love thrillers, you should check this out. I'm not gonna tell you a lot more about it because I don't wanna spoil anything for you. I'm gonna talk about this in an upcoming video with my friend Lydia, so please check that out if you want more details about the book. But I loved this one. It's one of my new favorite thrillers. And if you love unreliable narrators and thrillers, check this out for sure. Fifth place is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is a Mayan mythology story set in the Jazz Age. And it focuses on our main character who finds this box in her grandfather's room. And Cassiopeia opens the box and out comes a god of death. She has to help the God of Death get back to his kingdom and reclaim it because now they're bonded. But as he spends more time in the human world, he's becoming more human and taking the life out of her. It's also a beautiful romance. <laughs> I just can't stop thinking about this book. If you like historical fiction or mythology, if you like jazzy stories and love stories, quests, all of these are things that are featured in this book. Family drama. It's marketed kind of as a Cinderella story. And I definitely saw that in a couple different ways. I don't know what else to say about it. It was great. It was fantastic. The romance, I can't stop thinking about it. I love it. That's all I have to say. Please read it. If you 
like stories like the things I mentioned, I think you would really enjoy it. In fourth place is The Whisper Man by Alex North. This is a thriller about a man named Tom who takes his son Jake to the town of Featherbank. They move there and in the past there was a serial killer named the whisper man who kidnapped young boys by whispering in their windows at night and taking them and then he would murder them that serial killer was caught but recently a young boy has gone missing under similar mysterious circumstances and so now the town is trying to solve this mystery it is a story about grief and death and mental health and overall is just a story about so many different pairs of fathers and sons and how that father-son relationship can look so many different ways and can impact you for years. It just, I can't even explain it. This book reads like a Criminal Minds episode, so if you like Criminal Minds or true crime or any of those type of stories, this will be the thriller for you. It has that detective perspective which I know not everyone is into but if you like detective perspectives really cool twisty thrillers I think you'll enjoy this this also has some paranormal elements to it very creepy um yeah I definitely gasped and I can't stop thinking about some of the things that happened in this book that were like really freaky so that stands out to me in this book the characters are great I loved every character I cared deeply for all of them so please check this out. In third place is The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. And this is a story of Alicia who shoots her husband in the face and then stops talking. She doesn't speak another word for six years. And then this is told almost entirely in the perspective of Theo, who is a psychotherapist who decides he's going to be the one to counsel Alicia and get her to talk about what happened that night. It goes back and forth between Theo's perspective and Alicia's journal leading up to the day that she shot her husband. So it's full of the craziest twists ever. It had so many of my favorite, I don't want to say tropes, but topics. It talked about Greek mythology, theater, murder, all kinds of wonderful things that I absolutely love. So this book, I'm not going to tell you any more about it because the twist had me fully shook. I recommend it. It's hyped. It's hyped for a reason. Check it out. Second place, a book that I'm so late to the game on, Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. This book is a young adult fantasy about this group of kids, teenagers, who are all outcasts. They all are living kind of on their own and have been discarded by society. And they are hired to go kidnap this man because he's being held prisoner because he created this chemical, this drug that allows the magical people in this world to have super crazy powers that can be really destructive and so in order to stop this army from happening these kids are sent to kidnap this man and stop the use of this drug from creating an army of extra magical people it is another like found family heist story that is just full of like warm and fuzzy moments and the intense moments i felt like i couldn't stop holding my breath the entire time it was just so intense and the romance in this book, I have not stopped thinking about. This is a duology, so I'm very eager to pick up the second book because I want to know what happens. I need to know. Obviously, this is my number two book, so I loved it. I loved the heist aspect and the different tricks they had to pull to accomplish their task. I loved learning about each character's backstory as we went through the story. They all are lovable and have something special about them. I didn't dislike any character. They're all warm little cinnamon buns of people, even the ones that are hard and tough. You like learn more about them and you're like, ah, oh, I want to cry. So it was great. It was amazing. It was such a good young adult fantasy and I'm so sad I missed it when I was a young adult, but I'm happy I'm reading it now. My number one favorite book this month is... The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is a Greek myth retelling about Patroclus and Achilles. And so it is a male-male romance. Essentially, that is the star of the show is their romance. But obviously there are Greek battles. It takes place at the beginning of the kidnap of Helen. 
and so there is this war going on but the romance is what made this my favorite book of the month it's just a book that i will think about forever so if you love greek myths if you love romance and forbidden romance tropes <sighs> heartbreaking stories that will make you cry and think about them long after. Excellent storytelling, beautiful writing. It felt like reading poetry. It was just, if you like any of those things, please check out The Song of Achilles. It will be worth it. I have nothing negative to say about it. Not a thing. It was perfect. That is going to be all for me today, friends. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you read in the month of August. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye friends!